we have Jean from the I Love Black T-shirt club. Yeah, she insisted. <laughs> Here to share the making of her thesis entitled Skill Ability and the Public Realm, KL City Hall. So, so I'm going to pass around this book. So when she gets boring, you can like fiddle on this book. <laughs> Um, so, welcome y'all uh, to the interview nobody asked for. Okay, I have a few standard questions for Jean here, but you are all invited to, at any time of the time of the interview, pop up questions, uh, just raise your hand, I will try and catch you and we will uh, go on about it, okay? So, Jean, hello? Hi, Okay, um, can you explain what is this? Alright, um, before I begin, I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Lee Cherny, architect Lee Cherny. Yeah, he's my tutor. So I have two tutors for this uh, thesis. Cherny was the first part. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Nazmi, who couldn't make it today, so he was my tutor for the second part of the thesis. Alright, so uh, this, my thesis, is basically about the concept of scale ability and how it can be expressed in the design of KL City Hall uh, to facilitate dialogue between the institution and the public. Um, how did you arrive to this thesis? Right, uh, so first year of masters, um, I was interested in the idea of boundaries. So I explored the concept of third boundaries. And so for this thesis, I decided to expand upon that um, idea. And the initial proposal was actually um, for a transformable architecture with the intent to uh, discuss the negotiation of public and private spaces in the city. Um, but then that, that part about the moving forms in architecture was not really productive. So as advised by my tutor, Trini, um, yes. I, focus, I focus instead on the idea of people movement um, about the fluid spatial experience that does not rely on high technology or automated building parts. And so scalability is actually expressed in our Malaysian public life and space. It's described by William Lim as um, mutable. So the everyday space does not have a totalizing parameter of order. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, we have uh, public spaces such as our institutional buildings, um, which are designed as very sterile and secure spaces. And, and so, um, these kind of spaces are actually ours. We pay for them with our taxes, but then um, it's not very welcoming. And also, it's meant not just as leisure centers, actually. It's no point if you just add more 7-Eleven or Family Marts. So it's supposed to serve as a platform for us to dialogue and debate about um, how to improve our environment and city stuff. And uh, so, yeah, the premise for this thesis was that Chaos City Hall uh, is becoming more of a private image. Yeah, so that's how the thesis was birthed. Okay, then the next step is yeah for you to select on a project site, right? So how important really is uh, site selection and site analysis? Very important for school. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I selected my site based on its potential in relation to the thesis. So number one, it has to be um, a public lot. Secondly, it, um, ideally it is nearby pedestrian traffic, like public traffic, such as uh, LRT stations or markets or, yeah. And thirdly is that since it's a KL City Hall designing, it has to sort of retain the uh, existing strategic location. Now. So, um, and because uh, according to my teacher, I like to make life difficult for myself, uh, I chose this site. So uh, this site has, uh, a very challenging terrain. It has many ground levels. The site is outlined in blue. Yeah, and um, basically, it's perfect for this thesis because uh, it's surrounded. It's basically an out, leftover outdoor urban lot, um, surrounded by all the service lanes. And what's what's cool is that it's right next to a row of shop houses with their back back sides. So um, it has the potential to reactivate all these backdoor spaces of the urban lot. Um, yeah. For site analysis, um, I think complex. 
I just studied how people move around the site. So I studied on a daily, weekly, and bi-monthly time scale to see how the public realms transform over time. And um, this is so to understand how the proposed building can respond, respond to improve the urban network and to accommodate and to expand upon existing public realms. Uh, how do you start designing though? Um, how did you arrive to the design concept? All right, uh, so what really helped me in the beginning was to clarify my aims, my thesis aims. So I have three. The first is to rebrand uh, LCT Hall or DBKL as we know it into a more transparent and approachable public authority uh, through public accessible design. The second aim was to encourage interaction between the institution and the public uh, through conditions of negotiable boundary conditions in space. And the third aim is to expand public freedom of movement into the vertical realm. Uh, this is so to diversify the available public programs apart from just markets and public games. So um, I started off uh, with diagramming, uh, simple diagrams. Never in my life have I revised a set of diagrams so many times over and over again. But what I did learn was that uh, a good diagram should be self-explanatory within 30 seconds. At the same time, I also explored with models um, to produce all at once. Every time I produce, I produce the entire scheme. Um, that was a minimum GFA of 10,000 square meters. My site is 8,000. Yeah. So what exactly is scalable um, architecture and why do you use this hyphen to separate the word between scale and Apple? All right. Uh, so um, scalable, scalability is actually a real word without the hyphen. Um, but when you separate them, it actually emphasizes the verb of um, for the simple verb of expand and contract. And then I try to push the definition further um, with a condition of join and separate and thirdly, a condition of prescribed and unprescribed. So what exactly is... Um, and how this... Uh, Sorry, of, uh, let me explain the... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so from like this set of concept, right? Like, how do you make it like buildable? Like, what's that? So is scalable architecture uh, is a flexible architecture? Okay, so I find it was pretty confusing, scalability, flexibility, but um, what I learned over time as I was doing my diagrams is that, um, that scalable architecture is more of a specific flexibility. So it's more about specific flexibility that I introduced uh, that is specific to context. Of. So um, the terrain, the physical geography, and the people culture of the site was specific to the way I introduced flexibilities of user experience for a public institutional building in scale. And um, ultimately, ultimately scalability, uh, scalable architecture um, requires us as designers, as architects, to have a degree of confidence in the users to um, make use of the capacity given. That's one scalable architecture. Yeah, and back to that question again, like how do you make all this set of concept become like a buildable building? A real thing. Yeah, sure, yeah, a real thing. Okay, so um, initially, um, I the most straightforward way was to uh, was to talk about like post green structures, right? So I started with a compressive system, and um, the downside is that you have so many big masses above that are required by the program, and then um, we're in order to produce the three spatial conditions that I've outlined earlier, um, we, have, we have to use. I had to use a lot of thick columns, and also there was limited clear span. Yeah, so, um, so instead, I tried to. Um, uh, I looked at uh, Nina Bobadi's uh, 
art museum in Brazil. Okay. Yeah, and Ishigami is a uh, kite museum, kite workshop. And um, so the solution was to introduce long spanning steel box uh, trusses. And uh, this will then suspend the follow, the multiple levels of follow floor slabs uh, used to reconcile the level differences on site. And uh, below that, that multiple floor ground levels would be a clear span for me to put all the big masses such as auditorium, community halls, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, the suspended uh, floor slabs are in blue, so this is the development of it. And yeah, uh, the idea is that people can, the public can scale or climb the building from main ground levels, main ground levels uh, to the top, the rooftop. Um, it, by ramps uh, only, or yeah, or steps up. And, yeah. um, what are your intentions behind all the mediums and the drawings that uh, you use? Like? Mm -hmm. um, so, how do I communicate with this? Uh, before this, any questions from the floor so far? Are you here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, I experimented with a lot of different types of drawings uh, for this thesis. And um, I used montages to um, explain spatial quality. So, I export line drawings from Rabbit and um, put in textures and colors. Uh, but before that, uh, the workflow, yeah. Uh, so I usually start with just metal sketches, quick sketches on any surfaces, and then um, I would go into the digital modeling space. But for this thesis, I actually uh, used physical models uh, because I had time. And but I think it's pretty slow uh, that that process. Uh, yeah. So the important thing I learned about working in digital workspaces is that we have to always have the human scale um, right next to your workspace. So because it's an infinite space in the digital world, uh, workspace, yeah, so that's not oh. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So back to this, uh, that, that's a type of drawing that I use to express the spatial qualities. And then um, I use a sectional perspective. So this was developed um, as a 1 to 50 sectional perspective over time. Uh, it's about 4 meters long. So this helps to explain the vertical relationships, um, how I control them, and also to explain construction details. And um, exploded exonometry was used to explain how people um, move, how the public can move about the building complex and also explains the context, uh, the spaces around it. Yeah, and if you got to redo like your thesis all over again, what would you do differently? Alright, so um, firstly, I wouldn't propose a finished product like I did for this thesis. So this, this image was actually produced after my thesis. Um, this is for an exhibition in Taiwan coming up next. So then, yeah, because the idea is about public realm and scalability, I feel that the proposal shouldn't be something like a, a, a final thing, like a static final thing, because it's meant to be expandable, yeah, scalable. And um, lastly is that, um, I would also um, start differently because the way I started this thesis was to start about to think about spatial conditions without much thought for structure. And so, uh, Mr. Nasby, my second tutor, his his belief is that structure and space is, should come together. As um, yeah, as I come up with these proposals. Yeah, I, I would start that differently as well and explore more structural uh, possibilities. Of All right, any questions from the floor? Anyone wants to comment or ask? <laughs> the entire thing is a Q&A, so there's no Q&A after this. Hi, uh, your, your works is 
uh, competent and very complex. But uh, I have a simple question. Like you go to any government office in this country, where is your main entrance? Yeah. Secondly, as you know, you go to government offices, you can you get get lost in the maze. I don't know, would you get lost there? In terms of uh, how do you define which department and what, you know, it is like the the architecture. I know um, you your your you just mentioned about the diagram. It should be understood in five minutes, ten minutes. But if you look at your buildings, it can be anything basically. It can be art gallery. It can be a market. It can be. What is that your intention in terms of uh, to represent KL City Hall? That's all. Thank you for your question, uh, Mr. James. Right? Yeah. yeah, so your final question, uh, that it can be anything, well, yes, uh, yes and no, uh, because firstly it's a KL City Hall office, but at the same time, um, this proposal um, provides public realms as, as extension, the building as extension of public, the public streets that we have. Yeah, so um, the reason why I use different colors those objects. It means it can be anything like this. Um, but then again, we have scalable architecture about specific flexibility. These things I do not put in from nowhere. I studied the, the context, um, our culture, and um, these are specific to how we like to um, improvise, uh, appropriate our environment. Um, I hope that answers your question. Second and first, um, what's about Sorry, my main entrance. Oh yeah, main entrance. Okay, okay. So uh, my experience with uh, DBKL and or any institutional government building is that when I enter uh, that that their boundaries, right? I am I am directed through a very strict series of spaces. So the hierarchy in these buildings are very strict, and your experience is very controlled. Okay, so the, this thesis actually wants to um, defy that, and so it it does not um, have a main entrance because it, in a sense, it's part of the existing public realm. So it's just like a vessel that contains whatever you want to do, anything. Yeah. So yeah, the the intention was there that there will be no main entrance or uh, direct uh, comprehension of the building. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions or comments? If not, I will pass it back to Caleb. Any simple questions? Any, any more questions? What did, did I do for whatever? Uh, I wanted to hear a discussion about the process of completing a thesis for school. One, two, three. Thank you for your time, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, okay, bye. We will conclude.